So welcome back everybody to uh, Rudy's Electronics Lab. And I've been rather busy over the last couple of months, so I didn't make a lot of new videos. But now I'm ready to, to make another set of, um, of videos. I'm planning to be focusing on bear testing, bit error rate or bit error ratio type of uh, testing. And this is a thing I, I, I kind of kind of very fascinated uh, with, because in my laboratory I have quite a lot of devices that have some form of bear testing already built into them. Devices can either work as a, uh, a source or a test device when it comes to this type of testing. So all of the devices I got over here got that built in, also the picoscope over there. And on top of that, I got a couple of other devices that don't have bear type of functionalities built in, but it could be used for that purpose uh, anyway. Um, so I thought I would want to, to, to test a little bit more on, on, on the bear testing. So in this set of, um, of videos, first of all, I would like to give a little bit of an introduction what bear testing is really about. And I'm going to talk about in, um, in this, uh, this video today. Then secondly, I'm going to talk about what type of devices can be used for bear testing. And as I said, like all these devices in my, my lab have some type of bear functionalities built into them. Um, However, and I'm going to talk about that in the second video, none of them has exactly the set of bare functionalities that I'm kind of looking for myself. Also taking into consideration that I would also like to see if you can do bare testing with fairly uh, simple equipment, even using an oscilloscope instead of some of the, uh, the advanced device over there. Um, so after having reviewed all these devices and what they can do and they cannot do and comparing that to my own set of desires in bare testing, um, I'm going to talk then in a, um, a next episode about um, a little bear generator, a, 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 a pseudo random bit sequence generator, MP9 uh, generator, that I actually have been developing and building myself over the last couple of months. And I've been testing in it also in combination with these devices. So that will be another topic here. And finally, in one of the videos, I also want to talk a little bit about the more fundamental questions with bear, like what are we measuring in the first place. Why are we measuring? Huh? This is because telecom channels might be, uh, might be victim to noise and other type of, of phenomenon. So we're also going to look at a little bit more uh, theoretically at, at what are really the sources of the type of errors that bear testing is being used for. So um, a lot of interesting stuff to, uh, to talk about, I, I think. And so this episode, I'm, I'm trying to give a bit of an overview and going to talk into what bear testing is, is about. And then in the next episode, I'll go in a greater level on on detail. Now, why does bit error rate or bit error ratio testing exist in the first place? Because we want to know a bit more about errors. And in telecommunication systems, we have a lot of possible different sources of errors, especially if we talk about telecommunication systems that go over the air, uh, wireless systems, but, but there's also a lot of type of errors that can kind of pop up in, 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 in wired uh, systems. Now, what type of errors are we talking about? And I'm focusing mostly here on, on, on wireless systems. But first of all, we got um, noise in the trans, uh, transmission uh, channel. We might have interference from, from other signals that are being uh, transmitted, but not the signal that we're interested in. There might be some bit synchronization problems. There may be attenuation of the wireless channel, and there might be more complex phenomenon like multipath fading, where you would have reflections basically in the, in the radio path and, and basically echoes of the, 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 the signal arriving at different moments in times at the antenna of the, uh, the receiver. Then on top of it, because we work with, with devices like transmitters and receivers, we might also have problems that, that basically come from these devices, like the component noise of these devices by themselves, and forms of distortions and non-linearity that are uh, a result of the, uh, the device uh, design. That's why I put the little asterisks here. And we even got more things to cope with. But anyway, suffice to say that there are a number of different reasons why telecommunication systems uh, can be subject to all types of, of errors. And their systems are really about being able to measure these errors. So how is their bit error ratio typically being defined? It is the number of bits where we find an error divided by the total number of bits transferred 
during a given time interval. So we're really talking about a kind of end-to-end -end measurement. We take the whole chain that we have built and we put kind of bits on it on the one side and we look what we receive at the other side and it's the kind of the final determination assessment of our telecom system, how it um, behaves. Now, you can look simply at the, the, the bits being sent over. You can also look at another level depending on the way that you modulate your signals at, at symbol error ratios. If you have a system which is more about data transmission in packets, you can also talk about package error ratio. The underlying ID is, 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 is a bit of the, the same. And what, this type of testing is kind of useful to have an idea how many errors there are, but also evaluate different type of designs of transmitters and receivers. Um, because making smarter designs that fit with the, the characteristics of your channel, etc., uh, might allow you actually to, to have less errors uh, or actually to get a higher data rate at the, um, at the same error rate there. Um, so this is why, why this type of testing, bear testing, is extensively used by, by parties that develop like telecommunication equipment, telecommunication chips and, and modules, uh, etc. That's also the reason why we find it in so, so many of the devices that I got right here in the, uh, in the lab. Now the typical type of, um, of testing scenario might look a little bit like, uh, like this here. We have a, a transmitter and a, um, a receiver. Um, and the transmitter is actually being fed by, uh, by, by data that comes from a, um, a generator, a, a generator that generates a bitstream. And as I'll explain in a, in a moment, uh, we use particular type of bitstreams for this type of, um, of data. Then in the transmitter, there's going to be a, a part that creates the baseband signal. Uh, it might or might not be a form of quadrature or IQ modulation. There's going to be some, some radio frequency, high frequency parts. It's going to be transmitted or, or by an, an antenna. That's going to be the, 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 the radio communications channel, huh? the, the ether, as it was once uh, called, and that's where various types of, uh, yeah, of, 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 of errors may, uh, may occur. And on the other side, we got a receiver that again got a radio frequency part, that got a baseband part, and then we would connect that up to a uh, to a tester and, and that's a tester that specifically is expecting the type of signals that we're making in our our generator uh, here. So this is a kind of a real life test where we have a real communication channel going on. Now you might also do type of testing where you don't each time want to set up this quite unpredictable radio channel where you have to move your transmitter to two kilometers away in a particular situation and, and, and then expect what's happening in the channel. It might be kind of nice if you have a bit more control over that radio communication channel because that, that would allow you to play a little bit with different system designs um, and, 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 and then you would like yourself to kind of simulate the type of errors or the, the radio path the, the, that, that would be available. Now that is also a common type of, um, of scenario and then the test scenario would look a little bit like, uh, like this. Uh, you would still have your, your, your baseband design but then instead of basically transmitting it on an RF frequency, we would take out the baseband signals and, 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 and if applicable, the, uh, the I and the Q uh, signals, bring it into a, um, a simulator, um, and that's often called a fading simulator, and then, then we go again to the receiver and we, we demodulate, decode that, that signal and evaluate it again. And actually, I got a device in my lab which is right on top uh, here, and, and, and that is the Roden and Swartz uh, AMU 200A, and that, that is exactly the device that we're talking about right here in the middle. That is a fading simulator that, that can simulate um, yeah, a channel with, with particular type of characteristics in terms of noise, in terms of delay, in terms of multipath fading, um, and, and, and a couple of other things I've just been, um, been talking about. Now, I want to talk a little bit about the type of bits that we send over the system in order to go and, um, and test them. And the, the type of, of regular way of, of testing this type of uh, things, um, we used a predetermined stress pattern. So that is basically a sequence of ones and zeros that is generated by a, a kind of test generator. And again, we have the test generator in various of the device over here, but that's also the focus of the, the self homebrew device that I want to talk about in the, uh, in the later episode. Now, there's several types of patterns that can be used for that, and a very popular type of pattern is the so-called pseudo-random binary sequence, also known as P 
PN sequences. So these are pseudo-random sequences of ones and, 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 and zeros, and they have a length of, a predetermined length of, and we will call it here, n bits. So they repeat themselves every once in, in, in a while. Uh, to be more precise, they repeat themselves every 2 to the power of n minus 1 bits. So if the number of bits of the, the, the PN generator is 9, then it will receive itself at um, 2 to the power of 9 minus 1 is 511 bits. So we get 511 random type of bits, and then we actually repeat exactly the same pattern of pseudo-random bits. And the PN11 pattern repeats itself much more often, and the PN15, uh, or more often, it, it's a longer bit sequence before it repeats itself slightly over 2000 bits, and the PN15 pattern is a pattern that repeats itself only after uh, some 32,000 uh, bits or, uh, or so. So these are the typical type of patterns that are being used for, for this type of, um, of testing. And why are we using this type of, uh, of, 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 of pattern? Um, this type of patterns, um, they are deterministic. Let, let, me be not, uh, let me be clear about this. Uh, these are not purely random patterns. It actually takes a lot to make really random type of, of, of data, uh, but they, they're, they're pseudo-random, they're deterministic, they're already determined by the way you generate them or maybe even stored already in the device. However, if we look at that data, at least at, at, at one frame of the data, it really seems to be random in the sense that the value of, of any element there, ag, is independent of the value that we got uh, before and after it, or any of the other elements there. Um, so this signal basically has very specific mathematical uh, properties, like this is autocorrelation function. So it, it, it meets a number of requirements uh, that are key, basically, if we want, really want to do independent testing of the bits being sent over. Because if the bits were correlated or related to each other in some way, we might not be able to do objective type of bit error testing. Now, like I said, the pattern that is generated by this type of devices is usually repeated after n elements, after n bits, and it makes that also a reproducible or as we could call it a cyclical or, or non-random type of uh, of bit sequence. So th this is quite an interesting thing in itself um, and in my later videos I'll also talk a little bit about how I went about actually to create a, uh, a PN sequence that is actually uh, the basis of the device that I got over, over here. But all of the devices also in my lab have some way in which they generate this type of uh, pseudo-random bit, se bit sequence codes. Now, one of the ways that, 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 that I quickly want to, to mention of creating such codes, because that's also one of the, the, the original ways that it started with, um, you can create these codes basically in hardware by using shift re registers. And one way to create a, 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 a pseudo-random bit sequence of, uh, of 9, so a PN9 code basically, is to take a shift register and feedback certain bit position, in this case the 9 position, the 5th position, and then the 1st position, back into the data stream. Um, so this is a kind of system in which you could implement this thing in, 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 in hardware. Do remember that uh, this type of uh, design will also depend on the starting value that you power up the device with, and we call that a, a, a seed. Um, and after you start it up in that predetermined type of position, then we left the shift register work huh, on the basis of, of a clock signal, and it would start to produce this repeating type of, 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 of signal. This is not the only way by which you can make uh, PRBS codes, um, but this type of codes, even by a real shift register or doing the same thing in, in, in software code, basically, is, is, I guess, the most common one right now. And you also got some uh, technical standards, including, for example, the ITU CCITT standard, and, and I'm mentioning the particular, uh, the particular reference here, that describes basically how these systems could be generated in a certain way. So, so if we talk about them, everybody talks about the same type of signals, and here actually you see the cover page of this specific standard by, by the ITU. Uh, yeah, that, that describes uh, yeah, uh, certain type of characteristics of, 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 of bare testing um, and as well the, the test signals that are, uh, are being used there. Um, so the field of bare testing is, 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 is 
is actually a complete field of um, in itself with uh, with also dedicated measurement uh, devices and 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 on the um, on the screen over here I'm showing you some very specialized type of uh, of bear testers and um, Andritsu from Japan uh, is perhaps one of the most specialized companies in this field and make a number of devices that are specifically designed for bear testing uh, only and some of these devices as you can see here on the screen uh, can go to incredible type of speeds um, they will really be doing the, the latest, fastest type of, of telecom technologies, uh, either wire-based, but, but some of these systems are also designed for, for wireless type of, of capabilities. Very fast networking uh, standards, very fast local connectivity standards like the, the PCI Express bus in its latest generation, or things like Thunderbolt interfaces, etc. And because also there, we'll be able to do that type of testing. Huh? You, you might be aware that that if you talk about very fast local interfaces like, uh, like USB 3 um, and Thunderbolt, and you're very dependent on cable length, for example, and whether you regenerate a signal uh, in some active way, etc. Uh, whether that system is still acceptable in terms of the number of, 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 of errors the system uh, produces. Now, so these are very, very specialized and, and, and I guess also expensive devices. I haven't looked up their, uh, their list price, uh, but again, you also find their type of testing and uh, a bit more basic in terms of the maximum speeds and, 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 and the options that you have in a whole range of measurement devices that you actually might already have in your lab or, uh, or build yourself like we're going to do in this, uh, this series of, uh, of episodes. So that's it for now for the, for the first episode and I will be then posting soon this series of, of, of other episodes that go more into the uh, theory, that go into selecting the right device for, uh, for bare signal generation or, or testing um, as well as building your own device and then in the end of course we're gonna, gonna actually perform this type of testing and we're gonna connect some of the, 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 the bare testers to my, my, my homebrew device and we're gonna see, uh, check a number of different scenarios where we either generate some, 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 some noise ourselves, so we can, the, the device allows basically a predetermined type of, of, of errors, uh, so we can look at that. Uh, but we can also play around a little bit with channel simulators and, and see if we add like random type of noise uh, and whether we can actually see that well in, 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 in the testing um, scenarios. So that's it for the first video, so uh, stay tuned for the, the, the next videos if you're interested in this uh, topic and um, thanks for watching.